Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on human geography of late. In this session, we are going to talk about a very interesting theory that deals with the economics of location. So this is August Losch theory of economics of location of 1940 and it was kind of a modification of central place theory. Now this is primarily an economic theory. So why is it important in geography? That is the question because it gives us a locational aspect, a locational analysis, a spatial analysis tool that is economics of location. So let's learn about the important aspects of this theory. Also see how much of modification did he do in this particular theory that is modification of the central place theory. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about this economics of location concept and this theory by August Losch. So August Losch was not a geographer that's also important again here. He was a German economist whose theory is important in geography, in urban geography and also economic geography that is important. So this was his seminal work or seminal contribution that is original work of regional science and urban economics that we are looking here. So in 1940, remember 1933 was Kristaller central place theory. So after seven years of the central place theory, he gave his own concept of economics of location in his work that was modification of Kristaller's model basically what we say right so he established a general theory of location for the first time on the basis of economics of it that is why it is important to learn so his model has an empirical inductive approach basically means that we are going from a particular to a general we are trying to make a particular induction into a system and then try to locate the generalization of it it means one phenomena in one particular place is being studied and then it is going to be tested in several other parts of the world so that to check is it applied as a universal theory or not this is what is induction so inductive approach is there and it provides a moderate critique so it means it's not a hardcore rejectionist or critique of cpt that is central place theory rather a moderate critique why because he himself used many concepts given by Kristaller's work for his theory as well only certain parts he actually critiqued. So it was the first attempt to develop a general theory of location with a major emphasis on demand that is one of the major aspect of economics that we know. Right. So this is one of its kind, a very unique theory and Losch sought to draw attention to the marketing factor and the idea of maximum profits related to sales revenue. Now you see this complete marketing factor, sales revenue, demand factor, the core economics concept applied to the locational aspect. That is what we are interested here, economics of location. So he claimed what? That it's not a single economic pull. That is the centrality or central function of a place that influences the settlement. Rather what it is? It is a complex combination of market, communication or administration or many other factors that would regulate the shape or pattern or the location of a particular settlement. That is why we say economics of location. Right? Now let's elaborate further more. So if you observe, he based his theory again on set of assumptions. What are the assumptions? Very similar assumptions to what we have learnt in the central place theory. The isotropic surface, it means equal attributes in all around the space. It means all the places have same potential in terms of economics, right? Isotropic, then constantly supply of goods and services. It means goods and services are being supplied in that particular space, in that particular settlement on a constant basis. It does not change, it does not vary, it is uniform and population is also uniform evenly distributed. So this is basic idea that was also present in Kristaller's work as well. Now the fourth one is the most important point here, a very unique point that is demand decreases. When does demand decrease? When the increase in price is there. Obviously when something is increased in price, demand gradually decreases of that product. That is a normal law of economics. So if the price increases, which is a resultant of what here? transportation cost. Remember right from Von Thunen to Weber to Kristaller, we talked about transportation cost being one of the very important factor, the distance from the market, right? The demand would decrease with the distance from production center. 
that is very interesting here that demand would decrease as you go away from production center why because at production center transportation cost would not be added so where the production cost is there only that you have to pay at production center while if you go away from the production center you'll have to pay the transportation cost for the same object right so that was important so the demand curve would be cone shaped and market area would be circular now this is very interesting that demand curve should be cone shaped something like this conical and the market area would be something which is circular like this with the center here right so this is what we say something that was interesting in his assumption and entrepreneurs act as economic man the very common thread right from von Thunen to Weber to central place theory of Kristaller we have been learning this economic man concept as basic assumption that all the people are economic man it means their only motive is to create as much as profit possible right so that is important here as one of the assumptions now what is here in this theory let's understand what was this demand curve all about what was this locational equilibrium what he talked about so he oversimplified the world to a flat uniform plane that is very interesting and also at this point he was also criticized that does not happen the world is not so flat and uniform in actual sense isn't it so with increase in price the demand for a product decreased one point and the second is if this price increase was because of increase in transport cost what will happen the demand would decrease with distance from the production center so if this is the center of the market where you are getting that product as you go away from this market what would happen to the demand the demand would decrease like this the curve would be like this right so this is what we say as the curve of demand here which he plotted would be falling down with distance right and if you observe carefully this is a circular center circular settlement with the center here at the market so this diagram showcases what that there is a relationship between distance and demand here basically that determines the settlement pattern right so locational equilibrium occurs between a unit or entrepreneur and its market now this is also a profile of equilibrium if you say remember all the physical theories right all the normative theories this theory also tends to talk about this profile of equilibrium which is between two things one is the entrepreneur who's selling that product that is the production center and that is next one that is the market point so there is this market and there is this unit or entrepreneur between which you have what you have a locational equilibrium that is important point here so locational equilibrium is nothing but a balance between the people who are the entrepreneurs and the distance that you are traveling from the market to fetch that goods or sell that good that is important here now if you see here every good sold and every service offered will have a different lower and upper limit of course they will have different lower and upper limit and what is important this will result in variety now this is diversity that is being talked about so a different threshold and a range could be offered for every product right it will not be same like in crystallis theory that is the modification for every product you will have a different range of good and threshold value right because they are unique they have different upper and lower limits every good is sold or service is offered right so this will result in what a very chaotic landscape a very chaotic market system with different meshes if you observe different system if you observe this complex system right this is what he talked about Laussian model has this uniform plane but with a complex or chaos of this market on the basis of different threshold values right so some order can be introduced only by arbitrary centering now he is saying that if you want to create some order in this entire disorder system of the market what you want to do you want to arbitrarily place something on one point that is not without any particular rule or logic but rather you can place in the central position a particular point which is supposed to be the bigger center that is metropolis and what will happen according to this theory this metropolis would create certain kind of order among the disorderness right only on the basis of demand that's important so further by rotating the various nets of this hexagon that you say what will happen alongside this important center which is arbitrarily placed that is important here to understand right 
So what will happen? The city rich and the city poor areas can be produced with maximum degree of coincidence. So it will be a clear cut areas for city rich and city poor which will be integrated in the system. So that is where what will happen? That is between the city rich and city poor sectors will develop. Now this is important point to note here that this Laussian model is located in that particular position in Germany where you have most of these sectors which are industrial sectors alongside all the agricultural sectors. So there is a clear cut divide line between rich and poor that is what is capitalistic society right it fits there. So it is coming from there right and what you see here these particular along the transport corridors or transport routes this is like a sectoral model of settlement along the transport corridor now you observe here it is these routes that radiate outwards from the central metropolis and what has it been called this is that center which has been called as Laussian economic landscape so Laussian economic landscape is nothing but a city center with having maximum amount of the demand and most of the areas which are radiating out, the roads that are radiating out, the transport routes that are radiating out of the city will create the economic landscape which will be very order in the entire disordered system. Something of that nature this entire theory is. So theoretical arrangement of market areas and their derivations was created in Laussian model. Now you must already be seeing that it's such a complex model to be created like this, isn't it? That's why it was also criticized because this theory tried to make a complexity of factors. This theory talks about demand that is one point, locational equilibrium as second point, the difference between city rich and city poor at third point and also these transportation routes along which this Laotian economic landscape would develop. So, so many factors making the complex landscape or urban landscape that we are saying here, isn't it? So, what you observe? The difference between Kristaller and Loesch, it's very clear. Landscape is fully developed here in Kristaller's central place theory. While in Loschian model, landscape is still developing, not fully developed. It's a complex pattern. Then here you have developed countries very clearly in central place theory. While Loschian model fits the developing countries, which is still emerging, which is still developing as Loschian economic landscape, right? So closer to rank size rule. Now rank size rule is... What we need to learn in a separate lecture, there will be discussed in detail. But remember, rank size rule is about city ranks, about city size, how the bigger city is in relation to the just next city in the order. So is there any order in that particular way? That is rank one city and rank two city. Do they are related or not? That is what is rank size rule. So it follows that the crystallar central place theory, urban hierarchy. But Laussian model follows the primate city concept. Only one big center rest every very small, 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 small centers around it. That is what is primate city concept, right? And primate city and rank size rule will be learning more in the lectures to come in details in separate lectures. So based on supply factor, this was crystallar place, central place theory. And based on demand factor is Laussian model. Then service sector was primarily of importance in crystallar central place theory. Here manufacturing sector is important here. That's why you have production centers and distance as you go away from production centers. Then it is an ideal and normative model that is Kristaller's model. But Laussian model is more practical and applicable because it is more clear that in reality it is a chaos, isn't it? It's not that simple to be in hexagon shaped ring, very clear cut defined boundaries, right? So it cannot show regional disparity of development, central place theory, but it shows a clear cut demarcation between rich and poor, the Laussian model. Right? That's where it is important to understand. Then further, if you observe the differences and similarities, fixed hierarchy is given according to K model, the K value, right? But in Laussian model, the K value changes. It means K is free to vary, right? And further, if you observe, socio-economic approach is primarily there in Kristaller's work, but Laussian model is primarily economics. It's not more of social. Rather, you can say economics driven place driven theory of location that we say. Now, Kristaller's model is top to bottom approach while Losh model is a flow approach. That's very interesting. That is from lower to higher, right? Then CPT, that is Kristaller's central place theory is based on centrifugal forces that is radiating out of the center, right? While centripetal forces are important, that is 
the centripetal force that is city function that is based on centripetal forces that is coming from outside to the city right that's important and cpt is based on southwest germany while this Laussian model is based on state of loa that is in usa right so the study was done in state of loa in usa that's the difference so us city and german city there is a quite clear cut distinction so Kristaller and Lausch both have similarities on certain assumptions but clear-cut differences that is important here to learn so what is criticism of Laussian model if you observe Laussian theory is very abstract in nature it's over stressing on demand and economics of location and problems arising from locational interdependence of plane is what is making the chaotic system also what is important here markets they often overlap and do not occur in isolation as it is said here therefore as pointed out by Laussian what you see locational equilibrium rare occurs it does not occur like that between an entrepreneur and a market that's important so Losh's notion of market demand was very simple which tried to actually give a simplistic understanding of actual complex system in the market that is there isn't it so that's why it is important an empirical study might show no such pattern that was envisaged in the theory by August Losh but even after so many criticisms August Losh model is one of its kind which gives us insights about the economics of location also if you observe Kristaller and Losh model have similar grounds of hexagonal ring pattern of the market service areas and also unbounded plane with equal access in all direction isotropic surfaces but most of them tend to behave in ideal state systems they are not practically available to be seen on the ground that is where they were mostly criticized so i hope you understood the crystallar central place theory in the previous lecture and its modification in Laussian model of economics of location that's important to remember as important theories in urban settlement system urban economics regional economics and also regional planning and development so now when we have learned in details about august Losh economics of location theory its various aspects attributes criticism in the sessions to come we'll be talking more on several other theories and models in human geography so stay tuned stay safe keep watching and don't forget to share the videos with others as well